for, for the people that don't know, Sarah Ojoke was a two-time back-to-back Afro basket champion with the Nigerian national team. She also, um, she's in her fourth year as a pro, which is, which is fantastic. People don't even go that far. Most people, after a couple of years, people just tend to go back to the States or go back to their country. So she's a four-year pro going on her fifth year. Um, and she also qualified for the Nigerian national. She also, my mistake, she also qualified for the Olympics with the Nigerian national team um, back in September, right? Yeah, we qualified in August. No, no, well, we won Afro Basket in August, which sent us to a qualifier in Serbia this past February. Yeah. So the actual qualification, we got it in, in February in, in Serbia, in a tournament right. in Serbia. Well, that's good. Let me just say congratulations for that, because that's huge. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. So what's been going on with you in, in New York? Because, you know, the whole, like, the I mean, everybody in the world knows the, the coronavirus. And I know in New York, it's really bad right now. Y'all are on lockdown, huh? Yeah, it's, like, really bad, like, right now. But um, we're just trying to stay safe, like, stay inside and everything, following protocols as closely as possible. Um, I have a mask. You know, I have an N95, and I have a few surgical masks and stuff that I make sure I wear when I go outside. But um, other than that, you know, it's just, like, standard stuff, typical stuff that, you know, you do every day. Like, you come home, you wash your hands. Um, Before you eat, you wash your hands. Yeah, just personal hygiene. Make sure you're on point along with the social distancing hygiene and social distancing stuff. Yeah, I mean, mean, everybody just – takes care of their own personal hygiene, stays clean. Right now, everybody has to do the social distancing. Everybody will be, hopefully, things get back to normal soon. So, like, how have you adjusted, though, to the whole lockdown? So, like, because, you know, I'm taking classes right now. Um, I'm in my first year of medical school. Um, and they, like, took, they, they, under normal circumstances, I wake up every day. Like, I live, like, my apartment is, like, up the street from, from, the, from the school. So, I wake up every day. I, like, eat breakfast or whatever. And by, like, 7 or 8, yeah. I'll, like, just walk to school and then be there, like, a typical, like, 9 to 5 type of schedule, more or less. But, like, mm-hmm. with the lockdowns and everything, um, I think we had spring break in March. And right before we right before we got off for spring break, that's when things started getting, like, kind of, like, crazy. So, basically, like, we already yeah. knew, like, okay, when we go for spring break, like, we're probably not going to come back. So the question is, like, how are we going to, like, continue to learn? And so they just pushed everything, like, they pushed everything online. So everything that we're doing is just, like, online. We're taking tests online. We're taking tests at home. We're do- t- in class wow. online and stuff like that. So. Yeah, it's, it's just, man, the whole world is a, it's, it's an interesting time right now. But I think that eventually, when this all passes by, everybody will just look back at it and be like, wow, we really made it through. Yeah. So. Yeah, first, I felt like I could go somewhere better. So I played, I finally switched AAU teams, and I played for Houston Elite. And we didn't play for oh, more yeah. than three, we, we, didn't, we didn't play for in, in more than three tournaments. And I already had, like, high major offers, you know, rolling in. Like, but I had an opportunity to go to Dartmouth. Um, Dartmouth was recruiting me heavily, like, heavily. But I was like, man, I don't know if I want to <laughs> go to, I don't know if I want to go there. Because, I don't know, I just feel like, I know I'm smart, but I don't know. Like, something, my heart just didn't tell me to really just commit to there. So, like, I played with Houston Elite. And, like I said, within two, three weeks of playing with them, we traveled to a couple of – we had, like, Boo Williams scheduled on the list. We had Title Nine scheduled on for that summer. But I didn't even make it that far because University of Pittsburgh snatched me up quick, like, as soon as they saw me. I remember the tournament that we went to, too. I think it was, like – um in Virginia or something like that we went to a tournament and it was it was a wrap after that yeah me and my brother we played for Houston Elite actually back in 2020 yeah we played for them for a little bit I mean it's interesting because I feel like this these days like um you know there with the Nike UIBL the Adidas circuit the Under Armour I'm not going to say it's easier to get a scholarship than it was back then but I think it, it might be because there's so much, it's easier, like, with the social media and everything, exposure-wise, these, this, these days is a lot easier than it was back then. Uh, that's true. That's right. Yeah. So, University of Pittsburgh, I wanted to get away. I wanted to get away. And um, it was cool. I just wanted to compete. I really just wanted to compete at the highest level. 
that's really why I went there. Yeah, I wanted to compete at the highest level, and and they were a team that was competing for a national championship, and that's and that's what I wanted to do. So nice. Yeah. twice, right? That year, you guys were the biggest at that time. Exactly. You found, uh, exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. You play yep. UConn. You always so, I want to I mean, that, play cool. UConn. We went to the Sweet Sixteen my freshman year. It was it was dope. It was a great experience. Yeah, I'm sure it was. So that's good. And then you, you transferred though, right? Yeah, I ended up I ended up transferring for academic reasons because I knew that I wasn't gonna like get the degree that I wanted to get because at the end of the day I knew one day I was gonna like become a doctor. That was always I don't know. I just always wanted to be a doctor. Like, and I was a uh, I was like when I was there. Because of your parents, your dad, if it is a doctor. Yeah, yeah. So I always really admired him for for that um, and everything. Because you know that that check that check's different. But uh, yeah, I always wanted to be a doctor. And I was always interested in like the, the human body and sciences and stuff like that research. So after my, after my sophomore year, like it it became kind of evident that I wasn't going to be able to. Really, like, the classes weren't going to fit with our practice schedule. It just wasn't going to happen. Like, I wasn't going to be able to get the degree that I wanted. And I didn't want to go for go to school for four years and, like, let, like, told me, like, academically I'd be able to do what I wanted, but I ended up not being able to. So I transferred. I ended up finishing at what is now KSU. And I got mm. – um, I, I probably got, like, every award – that they offer in that conference at the time. I was like a two-time All-American, two-time first-team All-Conference. Um, we, we won the conference both my both of my years there. Uh, I was Defensive Player of the Year, Newcomer of the Year, scored 1,000 points in two years. Like, I just did everything. Like, so, for, like I, I, like, destroyed that conference. It was fun, too. And then last year, um, they retired my jersey. Like, they put me in the Hall of Fame. I, it was, they actually wanted to induct me two years ago, but I couldn't mm-hmm. go because we were in the World Cup. Oh. Yeah, so I was actually trying to think, like, dang, like, I could have done it, but it would have been tough. Like, I talked to the management of, of for Nigeria, and they're like, yeah, we'll fly you out there as soon as the, the tournament is over. And I'm like, man, that's too much stress, like. <laughs> that's too much stress. So I just, I just told them to postpone it for the next year, and then I, and then I just did it this past, this past fall. It was good though. It was great going nice. back over there. Yeah, congratulations, man. Getting your jersey retired, like that's huge. Like not everybody. I mean, I wish I had my jersey retired. Like everybody, that's something you dream of. But like when it actually happens, like that's good. So congratulations, Sarah. For yeah, appreciate that. it. Appreciate Bye. It was a great feeling because we had I had just won my second Afro Basket Championship, and like mm-hmm. I knew, I knew from like last summer that the team that we had was special, and yeah. I was thinking like I'm not even thinking go oh we're gonna go to the Olympics. I'm thinking I'm trying to get a gold medal. Like if we can get a gold medal, it's like let's go ahead and get get a gold medal because we can. Nobody. Team USA is like the premier team, right, to to beat. But nobody yeah. on that team is anybody that we haven't seen before. I've been playing against yeah. BG since I was a kid. Like, yeah, I remember when she was sad. Like, <laughs> I watched her get better, you know? <laughs> like, and Brittany yeah. Neca, I remember when Neca was on JV. Like, I remember when she came to Dallas. Like, we played against them. I remember all of that. So, mm-hmm. they, not, nobody's starstruck, you know? And everybody on my yeah. team, like, for that plays for Nigeria, like, we're all – like nobody starstruck like at all, like not even a little bit. So we were excited, um, but at the same at same time, like we didn't feel complacent or anything like that. We're we're still we're trying to we're trying to knock some heads off. Like we're trying to get a medal, like for real, for real. I feel like Nigeria, even the boys and the girls, like all of the players, they all played D one, and they they all played against the high in the they played at the highest level of D one. They played against all types of pros. So like. I feel like Nigeria is the only country in the world where they have a team where everybody is, is, has played against everybody, like from the USA. Exactly. Before they, they all know each other, they all played each other. Nobody's afraid. Nobody's like, oh, this is so and so. Like, no, nah, you've been competing since AAU, high school, 
I mean, I, I, that's just how I felt. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, nobody's really worried about. Nobody's scared. That's for sure. So you trying to go out there and and make it happen, make you guys even more happy and more proud. Yep, yep. So like, what went through your mind when they canceled the Olympics a couple of weeks ago? To be to be very honest with you, like I cried. Mm. I cried like my boyfriend, like my fiance. He had to like hold me. Like I was sad. I was like really, really sad. Like. It took me a little while. To, I was I was in a depression for like a little while, and it just took mm. it took me a little while to like um, understand that maybe focus on your family, focus on building a family, and like just do other stuff, you know. Yeah, have you been able to do and any other any hobbies? Have you tapped into any hobbies? Oh that you yeah, have the time to? yeah, definitely. So like, I've always always I've always loved to eat like really well and. <laughs> <laughs> especially yeah. Nigerian food like I love plantain yam you know egg sauce all that stuff stew so most of the time that I spend at home I, I cook like I started cooking like a lot like anything that I can think of I'll like put the recipe together and just go to the kitchen and whip it somebody keeps facetiming me yeah what, what's your which set which plantain do you prefer soft, soft plantain or hard plantain no, I can't. I hate soft plantain. I like crispy plantain. I like uh, it has. I like it when it's crispy on the edges. It's crispy on the yeah. edges, but it's kind of like soft on the inside. That's the perfect plantain. Eleven, really, up until now. I was waking up at 5 a.m. every single summer outside running, going outside running hills, doing plyometric, plyometric mm -hmm. for like the last 10 years. So some of that stuff is like already ingrained, like the form shooting, yep. the shooting. The, so now it's just like repetition. Just get reps on what you know you're going to be doing in the game. You know, do <laughs> do cardio, do strength training, that you, you know, stuff you'd be doing every day on a regular basis anyways to keep yourself, prevent yourself from getting injured. And then I watch a whole lot more film now when I watch more film um, now that I did when I was younger, too. So I just can get straight to what needs to be done. I think I was in, yeah, in December, I was like, I was the second, second leading scorer of the tournament. And then okay. we won the championship. Yeah, I, I, I would have been MVP, but I got malaria like, as soon as I got there. As soon as wow. I got there, I got malaria. I swear, that, sh that was the worst. That was the worst. Yeah. Really, to be honest with you, I watch more film on myself and see where I can be more efficient. Like, oh, if, if, if I'm making shots and, like, if I'm getting chased off the line in a game and I'm not making my one-two dribble pull-up, then I'm going to be like, oh, okay, well, that's what I need to work on because people already know I can shoot the mm -hmm. three. So I may, all I need to do is make sure I get a couple reps um, pump fake sidestep and and pulling up or pump fake once you dribble like pulling up and make sure that's solid and then that I floater think, too yeah and then or that floater pump fake get into the lane and just put that floater up and then you can't really be stopped the only person that can stop you is yourself really so at the end of the day I don't know but I'll say my favorite player might be like uh, on the men's side Kobe it was definitely Kobe my heart that was definitely no no questions asked. Hands down, it was definitely Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace. That drum was crazy. Yeah. I cried for like I cried for like a week. Like yeah, I cried for like a week when that happened. But my God, it's unbelievable. Okay, like at mm -hmm. all, it's hard to look. At it's hard to look at Kobe knowing that he's gone. It's like what? But, that doesn't make sense. But you but you know what gives me like peace and like gives me. Um, like comfort is just I keep telling mm. myself like le legends legends live forever like that's like legends never die like announcement is, what, what, what do you want to congratulations yeah I appreciate it I got engaged like a couple of days ago mm -hmm. not yet on on uh on Instagram or Facebook um if you do it's fine I'll repost it or whatever but yeah okay. So you're you're probably like officially aside from my parents, you're probably like officially the the first news source to 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 hear it. 
Okay, congrats, Sarah. That's huge. I mean, just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, we're watching you. We'll be in touch for sure. Yeah. So thanks for, for taking sure. the time out to come talk. Yeah, definitely. And thanks. Uh, shout out to everybody that um, watched our live. Um, appreciate it. Thanks for all the congratulations and everything. Appreciate you guys. And uh, hope to be back on the court again soon with Nigeria, making you guys proud. Like, we're going to try to bring you guys a gold medal. Yes, sir. We look forward to it. We look forward to it. And by the way, everybody who's on now, we are going to have some more people coming on as well uh, very soon. So just stay tuned. Dope. Dope. All right, dope, dope. All right, Sarah. Take it easy. Stay safe. Thanks. Thanks. You too.